Welcome to What It Is, the show that explores the art of sneaker culture. I'm your host, Adam Butler, and yes, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for joining me. Now, remember, as always, this show is powered by the OMF Network. That's right, the On My Feet Network. That's the family. That's what I represent. So you need to get down with it, too iOS, Android, whatever you have, you can go download this app because what? It's the first app for who? Sneakerheads. By who? Sneakerheads. That's right. You know what it is. Social platform. Show off your sneaks. Show off what you're rocking on feet. Now, matter of fact, let's start something new on the OMF app right now. Let's start showing off our heat checks on the OMF app. Let's do that. Sign up for the OMF app on my feet app, Apple, Android, wherever. Get a heat check. Check in with me, see what's on my feet. Let's start a conversation. So this week I have, they're not necessarily sleepers. These aren't sleepers, okay? A lot of people know about this sneaker, right? I'm not going to act like I invented the wheel by wearing these sneakers. But this sneak has made a bit of a comeback and it's such a classic, man. Let's jump right to the heat check for this week. This sneaker doesn't need any introduction, but I will do it anyway because this is one of the greatest and cleanest silhouettes in the history of Nike. This is the Nike Blazer. Look at this thing. It's clean. It's sleek. It can be casual. It can be sporty. Whatever. And the beautiful thing about it is you don't even need to be a sneakerhead to rock this one. In fact, most people that rock these sneakers are not sneakerheads, man. That's what I love about it, man. It's wonderful. Okay. That's what I'm rocking on feet. What are you wearing? Let me know in the comments below. Okay, so this week, again, we're going to continue our conversation, which focuses right on the culture. Last week, we talked about people rocking reps and why people would feel the need to rock a replica sneaker and get to that point, right? And, you know, at the core of that, we talked about how the companies probably could do a little better. And, yeah, we put some of the blame on resellers. But today, we're going to talk exclusively about resellers, the resale game, the resale market, how it helps sneaker culture. Let's get into it. So first and foremost, for anybody that watches this show that isn't necessarily a sneakerhead, and I encourage people to watch this show that aren't really sneakerheads because I love teaching people about the culture. Again, I love the culture. It's such a big part of my life. It's such a big part of my upbringing. If I can share that with anybody that's new, that's wonderful. But for you guys that aren't really sure what a reseller is, well, it's pretty self-explanatory, but let's talk about it anyway, right? Like with anything, there's a secondary market. and Any, any product that's exclusive will hit the secondary market. Last week, I talked about the Dale tickets, right? And, and any big ticket for any big concert, right? Scalpers will get that product and then increase the sales price in order to make a profit, right? So reselling, in a sense, if you're going to be a reseller, it makes sense to bump up the, the, the uh, ticket price, right? Or the, or the price above retail in order to make a profit. For instance, if I'm buying a pair of Jordan Runs or an Adele ticket or an Outcast, I don't even think Outcast would do a concert anymore, but if Outcast did a concert and let's say the ticket costs $80 or something for floor seats, if I get that ticket and I'm reselling it, then it makes sense for me to bump that up 20, 30, $40 so I can make a profit, right? That's the game, that's capitalism, it is what it is, right? It's no different in sneaker culture and let's be honest with ourselves okay we can't fake the funk right i mean we'd be lying if we said that they weren't always people that had to plug on the sneak right and were able to get it to you for a bit of a price so let's break down the pros and cons of resellers well let's start off with the pros it's always been difficult to get sneakers even before this dark time we're living in right where everything is exclusive and you have to win online raffles and go through all sorts of rigmarole in order to get your hands on your favorite silhouette of a sneaker right it was always a bit of a task to get it. Either we were waiting in long lines, things sold out. It was always hard to get your hand on the newest J, right? Or the newest Yeezy or whatever was coming out at the time, right? It was always difficult. Even dating back to my youth, I remember I wanted to pay a, a, a Deion Sanders, right? It was very difficult. Um, you know, the Diamond Turf joints. I actually have them sitting over there. One of my favorite sneakers of all time. I should have did those for the heat check, but next time next time but the diamond turfs right it was actually the first pair of sneakers i ever purchased right and i loved them but it was so hard to track them down now at the time we're talking about the 90s you know stuff restocked so i had to just wait but that didn't mean it was dip it wasn't difficult to get my hands on sneakers and as i got older and had my own money and wasn't spending pops and my mom's money right had my own money and was able to purchase some of this stuff it became even more difficult so what am i getting at 
it always pays to have a plug. Having a plug is so clutch. Now, the plug means somebody that goes out, will wait in that line for you. You know, it was difficult for me as I got older, started working. I couldn't leave work in the middle of the day to go hop in some line. I certainly wasn't going, sorry. And I don't know if I'm, if this is betraying, you know, betraying the cult, culture or whatever, or, you know, letting people down. But I was never one to sit up in lines and camp out and all that. That was never my thing, man. I'm sorry. I would have spent the two to twenty, forty dollars extra to holler at the plug to do that for me. And I did that often. Okay. That was the way I got sneaks often. I would holler at the plug. The plug was the move. That is one of the positives. This is a person that can go and find those hard to find sneakers for you at a price now we all talk about the good old days when it was hunting for something hunting for those sbs right something real rare hunting for some galaxy foams or something that was you know considered like these like these treasured sneakers that were hard to get they were only releasing like in a certain city in new york or philly or sometimes even los angeles if you had a person that can make that move for you if you didn't have time to go out and take the adventure which a lot of people do if you didn't have time to do that, then hollering at the plug is definitely a move and a positive for resellers. Let's talk about another positive for reseller. Resell stores are usually a great community space for sneakerheads, right? Now, COVID happened, campouts are limited. You know, and, and let's be honest, even with bots and everything, I don't think campouts have been a big thing for some time now. So going to your local sneaker shop, mine is Esteem. I love Esteem. I love uh, Deadstock. Shout out to Deadstock DMV. Shout out to Esteem. Shout out to Footage Society, man. These are the local sneaker shops in my you know town and in the Washington, D.C. area that I like to go to. And sometimes you don't even buy anything. You just go there and you hang out. You see stuff that you would never be able to see, right? Like air mags and, and stuff like that. Like it's a really cool hang out communal thing and to me that's the beautiful thing about sneaker culture being communal hanging out talking to people meeting new people right that's what i think is really dope about the culture and you do get that at the resale shops right and let's be honest the fair resellers usually have stuff for fair prices really this is why i'm shouting out these three stores in particular if you're in the dc area footage society esteem and dead stock dmv they will work with you. They're not taxing and hitting your head real crazy. Yeah, some stuff they are going by stock X prices, and we will talk about that in a second. They go by stock X prices and GOAT prices or what have you, but sometimes they work with you, and it's a great opportunity talking about resale when you have something that you want to get rid of, you can make some extra money. That's my third positive for resale. Let's get into it. Yeah, you too can resell right sneakers are a beautiful thing because you know they they appreciate i know a lot of people say you know it's a bad investment but it's really not trust me i've sold sneakers that i've worn two three times for over retail i have made a profit off of most of the sneakers i've gotten rid of and it actually is pretty smart to sell some of your sneakers because if you're a collector like myself you run out of space you just don't have the inventory the space to keep up with your inventory it's just not a practical thing to do i'm a grown man i'm a married man my wife doesn't want to look at 100 300 sneakers just sitting up in a room i don't even have the room to do it i've actually been in the process recently speaking of dead stock hollering at dead stock and getting rid of some of my stuff and i've made a pretty good profit doing that and this is things that i've worn quite a few times got a got good wares out of them you know what i mean taking pictures with them done all the stuff that you want to do as a sneakerhead got all the compliments i can i've had them for five three four five years and actually made profit off of this so this is the dope thing about reselling and having a reseller in a shop that you can go holler at especially if you have a good relationship with that shop right because really all they'll do is take your sneaker with a little bit of wear and tear on it clean it up a little bit make it look dead stock and sell it for double triple and that's on them but you still made a profit off of it again don't let the game play you you play the game that's what I would say to anyone that's having issues in today's climate with reselling. Don't get played. Play the game. And thank you so much for always tuning into the show, man. You guys have made this show a major success on the OMF Network, man. And I really, really appreciate it. I'm going to keep rocking as long as you keep watching, all right? Remember to continue to tune in and remember to follow me, MSR underscore Adam. Follow me, MSR underscore Adam. Hit my link tree. I got everything up there. Links to this show, links to the movie, links to my TikTok, links to my YouTube, whatever you need to find in regards to me is up there, okay? 
Enjoy your holiday weekend. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy this beautiful weather. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I'm up out of here. Y'all be great.